Hey, so at the moment I've got Orga and Massive Ego. Now, as some of you may know, uh, Kyle of Orga has joined Massive Ego. So guys, if you could just introduce yourself to the audience. I'm Al Massive, <laughs> um, I do the vocals with Massive Ego. I'm Lloyd Price, I do uh, production and keys. I'm Kyle, I do uh, vocals and productions for Orga and also uh, some of the production and the keys for Massive Ego and guitar. Can I play drums? I'm Kieran, I'm guitarist of Olga. Okay, so obviously there's been a bit of a uh, sort of new mashup, new evolution. A meld. A oh, meld. Mine. A meld. So two very talented bands coming together. So what caused that and you know, how has um, this come to, to be? Well we we've kind of worked with um, Kyle. Um, he produced the last album um, for us and we've obviously worked together, we've done shows together. Um, I don't know, we just need, we we had a kind of change during the whole lockdown thing. Um, obviously Scott departed, um, I'm not gonna go into the reasons why, but we kind of, uh, I mean, we'd already asked Kyle to kind of come on board before Scott departed. Kyle um, joined like last December, was it? Yeah, last but we kept it quiet and we started working on new material. Um, but then it changed, you know, the lockdown created a lot of change in a lot of people. And I think it's been, it's been, um, you kind of look into what you want to do and why you're doing it and what, how you should move forward. It gives you time to think about all of that sort of stuff. So moving forward, um, we started working with Kyle. Uh, after Scott had gone, we kind of started writing some new songs, uh, slightly more kind of synth based, going back to our first album, the Beautiful Suicide album, which of course Lloyd was involved with and was part of the band at that point. Good help. Um, I wanted to go back in that direction, whereas the Church for the Malfunctioned album was very, it was harder, it was it was an angrier beast. Uh, I didn't want to carry on with that vein, I wanted to kind of try something a little bit more song based and a bit more maybe 80s influence, a bit more synth based. So bringing Kyle on board, we, we achieved that, we've got an EP coming out early next year, a couple of singles coming first, they're all kind of in that ilk, although the first single that you heard tonight, um, which comes out in October the 1st, you will come you will comply. It's a bit of a mad beast. It's not really oh, synth yeah, based. Yeah, yeah. It's got guitar on it. It's the first time we've had guitar back in Massive Ego, probably for 20 odd years, isn't it? Like when I first started the band 20 odd years ago, we had guitars, we had basses, that kind of thing. But Carl's provided that. Um, and then recently, we reconnected with Lloyd. Yeah. And um, we're going to be moving forward because obviously we want to get straight on now with a new album. We're going to be working all together. Lloyd's going to be back in the fold. Um, so it's been a weird journey and we're kind of here now and coming playing at the O2 in Kentish Town, the old town and country club tonight has been an absolute joy because it's it's so steeped in history. I've seen all of my favourite bands have ever played here, like Duran Duran have played here, everyone's played here and um, to play here tonight with this kind of lineup, it feels really fresh and it just feels really it feels right. So I felt a bit rusty tonight, I've got to be honest, because it's been 18 months since I've done done singing and stuff, but um, oh, it's really good done to be back. Done, yeah, I've done some singing tonight, it felt really good. No, it's good to be back. So. You say moving away from the heavier stuff, but with that new single, like the entire set was much heavier than I've ever heard Massive Ego, and mm. much more confident and clear and just entertaining than you've ever been. So oh, okay. must um, be, I mean, must be doing some amazing things and uh, yourselves as well, Orga. Um, so Orga is the first time I saw them tonight and I was blown away. A friend of mine turned around and said, is that, is that Orga? Like, yeah, that's Orga. <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic stuff from all these guys, right? really talented guys. Okay, so onto the questions that I've asked everyone today. So you now get to go through them. So first of all, the heaviest question that no one likes to ask, what does goth mean to each of you? Mm. Go on, Lloyd. Okay, for me, um, okay, we're, we're with a kind of a goth kind of label um, out of Line Records, where it's kind of goth, it's hard, it's industrial, it's a bit of everything. Um, it's changed over the years, hasn't it? Out of line, it's more rock oriented now, more heavy metal. And, you know. Yeah, it's got more metal, but um, for me, goth is. I don't know, I'm not really into the whole off the peg list buy black clothes kind of thing. You don't really identify. I don't identify yeah. really yeah. as goth. I think we have a goth aesthetic and I very much love the whole kind of universal movies from the 30s with the Boris Karloffs and all of that. Oh, I grew up with that. That was my kind of staple kind of film that I always like to watch. So um, do, I, do I 
describe myself as goth? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm quite. Um, You're a goth icon, I suppose. Okay. Uh, I, like, I kind of twist it with other things, I think. So it, it's a bit electro, it's a bit London. Pigeonholed into that whole goth only genre. Yeah, I mean, I, I like synthwave. I like I like French synthwave. I like kind of Germanic kind of industrial beats, minimal beats. I like lots of stuff. So I, don't I think really that's, that's like the benefit of like the goth. See, I feel like it's an umbrella, it's, isn't it? It is a real umbrella with where everyone likes lots of different styles. So there's people who would call themselves goths that also love like quite some sort of modern stuff um, and like sort of rocky stuff and like the stuff in the eighties. It's, it's not really. It sounds like a pigeonhole. It sounds like oh, you only do goth music, but actually, if you look at the spectrum of what people listen to, yeah, it's so, much, so wide. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really positive. Yeah. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a goth that doesn't like bands like Highland, so into the old tribal stuff, and then Venga Boys. It's yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. Slipknot. Yeah. And, Who doesn't make you know, All of these very different genres. Every mm. goth, you'd be hard pressed. It's to more about. Doesn't love them all. It's more about an attitude, doesn't it? Yeah. It's more about an attitude. That's what it is, and just the way that you see things. So I think that's what it's about. It's yeah. just more about your attitude, the way you want to be perceived, uh, and how you perceive other things. Yeah. That's that mm. is it for me. Mm. You know, it's, it's it's not just being middle of the road it's no. just going and looking around and seeing what else is available and it's, it's you know being like it's, minded to it's different it's not things. all just about candles and crows no, and not. all of that stuff you know what I mean? it's, sadly not dark <laughs> it's a nice family to be a part of even yeah. if we're slightly on the fringe maybe and not the authentic kind of thing but it's a nice mm. family to be a part of and it definitely feels like a very nice community and one that i'm kind of proud to be associated with so I think with the first album, visually, it was more contemporary, and then the second album went more to a goth identity. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to do a, a definite dark album with that one. So. Now we want to go back to something a bit more contemporary. Yeah. Kieran, what does goth mean to you? I mean, it's about kind of like the like kind of people it brings together. I mean, it brought me and Kyle together to write music in the first place. We bonded over so many bands like Typo Negative and Sister Mercy Fields and Netflix and stuff like that. So. Yeah, we, then we just started writing music because of that. And yeah, it's, 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 it's more of a community than it is of a yeah. genre, I think. Yeah. It's not, it's, as you say, the state of mind, perhaps being more open minded, it's not really just sort of one thing. In the same way that a lot of, you know, other words are not really one thing, it just sort of describes a certain, perhaps okay. a certain scene. But I think within that, and that's why bands like Massive Ego and like Morgan, who were perhaps on the both really on the fringe with the cop stuff, with yeah. we're more sort of rock. Um, but that doesn't matter because, again, like we said before, people who are in the scene love all sorts of stuff, so more likely to listen to it. That's very well timed, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Sorry. 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 Well, my my mum, uh, I'd give her a shout out, she played tonight as well, no, was, she, um, I grew up with this sort of, this sort of like music, um, my, her and my dad were in a band, so from before I was born up until, up until like the mid-90s and stuff, so it's always sort of been a sort of, el everything I've listened to has always been very dark and I'm in that sort of scene, and very 80s and stuff, so it's sort of like, was sort of the start of it for me, so it's always, it's always been, it was always playing in the house, it wasn't like the, the pop and stuff, it was, Sister Mercy that sort of played as I was like four years old. <laughs> Boy, I think for me it was like in the 80s when we grew up as 80s kids didn't we? And I was always really bored with all that dying of loss being on the radio, you know, all that sort of thing. And then and you listen to, you know, and then you, you, you taste change when you hear stuff on the radio, Sisters of Mercy. I was a massive, I don't know, I just gotta go down Zig Zig Sputnik fan. I loved those guys, they introduced a different Thing, a different sound at a, a, a very crucial time for me because it was getting very dull and boring. And so that kind of, you know, that alternative look and sound, it just opened my mind. And, and that's what drew me to different things. Yeah, um, same for me, 80s kid. Um, probably more on the mainstream side of things, you know, obviously being a fan of Duran Duran, Depeche Mode, all the usual suspects. Um, but I also equally liked kind of weirder stuff like Dallas Carr, which was obviously Mick Khan and Pete Murphy. That led to the Pete Murphy, and then understanding what Bauhaus was, and kind of quite liking some of Bauhaus's stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of dabbled in the darkness on, on that scale, but yeah, I was very much more mainstream, kind of 80s kid, but yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm a bit younger, I think, than 
Wow. Yeah. I'm younger, probably you're younger than us, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 90s kids. Yeah, I was, I, mean, I, was, yeah. I grew up in the 80s, so basically where I lived in London, like there was a recording studio at the bottom of my road, and like all the 80s, you know, Adam Ant, Paul George, all that stuff, I used to record at the bottom of my road, so every weekend I got to hang out there, and, and that was where my sort of alternative thing came from. I used to go to school just at Paul George, so. <laughs> Brilliant. I think with me is I never really weirdly enough got into music that much as a kid until like something just kind of sparked and you know, about ten years old I started learning guitar at the same time as like getting into stuff like Metallica and all that stuff. So before getting into goth it was all very much like on the Iron Maiden and all that like that's kind of spectrum. But then uh my parents revealed themselves as kind of like the gods back in the day and then I was like introducing me to like Sisters of Mercy all that stuff and I was like I love this, this is very good. <laughs> well that leads me into my next question actually. Um, so did any of you receive any resistance from your parents or close friends when you decided to join the alternative culture? And if so, how did you deal with it? No resistance. No. <laughs> Encouragement. Yeah, yeah. Like, pick up the arse. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. No resistance at all here. I used to get told off for uh, going into my mum's makeup cupboard and kind of using the black eyeliner. Oh, okay. Once I discovered that she did have black eyeliner, um, I used to use that and I would get told off for it because I think she was thinking um, I was maybe going down the wrong route a little bit, but um, no, that was it, yeah. Okay. So what one gothic or alternative thing could you not live without and what one thing would you rather see disappear? Ooh, what's that? <laughs> they appear easy and then they're not. <laughs> well, I certainly couldn't live without having black clothes on my um, in my wardrobe because my whole wardrobe is black. I don't have any other coloured clothes. The only allowance is socks. I go for quite mad socks, wow, nice. so I've got a whole collection of lovely, Fantastic. quite mad <laughs> colourful socks. Okay. But they end up being. I just hide it. It's like a guilty <laughs> secret. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't want to. That's kind of quite important to me. I wouldn't want to. That. I think that was the question. Yeah, or and then anything you'd want mind. to see disappear as well. I wouldn't want to see my um, brightly coloured socks disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think if, if all my clothes, all, all the black clothes disappeared, I'd be very naked for a very long time. I mean, everything I own is black, um, and it'd be very cold. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything particularly like I, I, an alternative thing. I think things are quite you not know, things are more abstract than just the alternative. So not because I think specifically that I want to see it without. Perhaps, perhaps the sort of prejudice towards it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you know the sort of you know, the hate towards that sort of thing. I think people feel well, the whole so you like that sort of thing, and it's still, it's still, it's still quite yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing great thing about it's so open-minded. So it's it's kind of the polar opposite for people to be so anti it because it's like yeah. the people within that scene are so like accepting of everything. So yeah, I thought that's that's perhaps one thing to do with that. It's not necessarily part of the scene, but it is certain people. Yeah, I mean, just quickly mentioning Sophie, though, it's obviously a very mm. raw topic for every single one in the alternative mm. community, isn't it? Because it just shows that if you hurt one of us, as a family, you hurt all of us. And mm. Still, however many years now it's been, it's, mm. you know, it's yeah. still a testament to mm -hmm. the nature of how much we care for each other. Mm. So, yeah, that, that ignorance towards it is sadly... But then I think also on the other side, you've got, I think, the, the one, well, not one good thing, but one of the great things about the golf scene is it does... I think it does sort of create a home, doesn't it, for mm. people that don't quite fit in elsewhere, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so you're not just making as a freak in yeah. church and malfunctions. Yeah. I was just about yeah. to say that. <laughs> and the girl who finds gifts from crows, that's kind of based on that whole philosophy yeah. as well. And I think so. society has, not everywhere, obviously, because you, know, you mentioned horrific situations, but as a whole, I think the goth look is accepted more than it, you know. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, certainly is. It seems to be becoming a bit more mainstream. Yeah, I still think it's a very interesting heckle to be on the day, coming back from the video shoot. Someone shouted through the window, someone said, I know you, you're from the fucking Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a strange thing to say. You can make it. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I would wish. God, yeah. you must be rich. <laughs> so, where would you guys like to see goth or alternative culture progressing to and evolving to in the future? I think the UK scene needs a bit of a new fresh injection because yeah. I think it's and it's things like HRH Goth are yeah. uh, great they're all helping the things that you do your you know your online website um, Static Darkness a couple of years ago yeah it's all stuff like that that is helping to bring in 
kind of back a bit and, and get people excited and wanting to come out and watch bands play. And um, that's what it needs, because it, you know the Germans have it off to a T. They're they're great at what they do, mm. and we need to get back up to yeah. what we used to do quite well here. Absolutely, um, no, I think that's where it needs to, to go. It needs to be more, you know, bands in to the yeah. UK because every you know it's such a bigger scene, isn't it, in like Germany and stuff, and it's really suffered here for so long. So we have to like you know thank the the likes of Electrovox for trying to do that. So you're doing a good job. So, what tips do you guys have for anyone who wanted to get into the scene who's, you know, potentially closeted, as it were, wanting to be an alternative or a goth and struggling with that idea? Uh, other than just the obvious and just go for it. As yeah, I said, don't be scene, worried about it. The, the scene is so open minded and so accepting, mm -hmm. you can't really. Do anything that, that not at least one person will like, and and even if even if it's not their thing, they'll still give you so much support about it and give you tips and advice. It's a very sort of homely sort of community, so yeah. you know, we'll nothing to lose by it. Everything's good. Yeah. Now you see that a lot. I think you know, especially on the, the positive side of golf as well, is that when you go to Germany to do shows, sometimes it, I, mean, I go on stage and I think I'm not the slimmest person in the world, but then you look at all the other acts and actually. It's quite. A, there's no prejudice on this. No, yeah, 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 it's very welcome. It's not all body yeah. shapes. So they yeah. shouldn't be worried about yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's very welcome. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I think yeah. it's a really Size, positive thing. Shape, gender, yeah. it doesn't matter. sexuality, it doesn't matter. Really no. Not all scenes are like that. Okay. And just finally, do you guys, both bands, have any news you'd like to tell anyone watching? So well, the new Massive Ego single is out on the 1st of October, it's called You Will Comply. Um, we're going to do another single after that, and then there'll be an EP uh, in January next year, and that's our news. We have uh, Orga, we have a single coming out uh, next month. Can we talk about the one you've just released? Oh yeah, yes. Yes. Just, yes. we released one yesterday called, called Oxygen, which has gone down, gone down really well. We're really, really pleased yeah. with the response from that one. Um, There'll be this is the second one in the line of uh, quite a few. Yeah. Uh, there'll be one next month as well. Um, quite possibly one the one, after, maybe, <laughs> one after. It's maybe kind maybe of um, Daniel Graves has a lot to answer for. Mm -hmm. I know. He's kind of leading the way. He's a little put bit terrible ideas into my head, and now I can't stop. <laughs> well, a lot of labels are kind of following suit, and it is kind of the way it's going now that it's kind of single, it's single, 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 single. Yeah, single. my inbox always. Can you review a single? I don't like reviewing one song. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thanks a lot.